The transverse flute has been an orchestral instrument since the 1700s. You play it in a horizontal position, blowing across an oval hole in the mouthpiece. The air hits a sharp edge inside, producing sound. You turn that sound into notes by pressing the keys that open and close the flute's holes. They begin production by inserting a solid steel bar into a sterling silver tube. Then using a press, they lengthen it and taper it, reducing the diameter to 1.7 centimeters. This tube is part of what's called a head joint, one of three sections that make up the flute. The other sections are the center joint and the foot joint. Next, on another machine, they insert a second tube for the center joint. This device drills small holes to mark the position of each tone hole, the raised rim around each of the flute's holes. Now they insert titanium washers, called spiders, in the holes to help position the tone holes. They place a tone hole around each spider, securing it temporarily with copper wire. Once they solder the tone hole, they'll remove the spider. They solder little posts onto three strips of metal, called ribs. The ribs and posts will later hold the flute's keys in place. Next, they use what's called a profile cutter to shave the tone holes by minute amounts to perfect the flute's sound. Now using a wax injector and rubber molds, they create wax duplicates of the 120 different parts that make up the flute's 20 keys. Now they build what's called a tree. Using tweezers and a heated pen, they fuse the wax duplicates to a wax trunk that's 17 to 25 centimeters tall, depending on the type of flute. Then they place the tree in a perforated steel flask covered in masking tape. They pour in a liter of plaster, which hardens around the tree. Then they remove the tape and heat the flask. The wax melts through the holes, leaving plaster cavities in the shape of the key parts. The keys are made from tiny particles of silver or gold. These ones have a reddish hue because of their high copper content. The craftsmen pour a carefully measured amount into the casting machine's upper chamber. The machine heats the metal for 12 minutes. The plaster flask goes into the casting machine's lower chamber. They release molten metal into the cavities. Once the metal cools, they shatter the plaster under cold water, exposing a tree of silver key parts. Using a pneumatic cutter, craftsmen snip off the key parts. They have a dull finish because the silver isn't yet polished. Now they solder the key parts together and polish each finished key with a soft rotating brush. They also solder on a riser, which attaches the mouthpiece's lip plate to the head joint tube. They cut away excess metal from the opening of the lip plate. Then they use a lathe to cut out a hole in the head joint tube. A template ensures they position the hole correctly. Once again, they use copper wire to hold the parts together until soldering. They solder the lip plate assembly to the head joint tube using a gas and oxygen torch. Next, they mount the keys using tiny wires called straight springs. The spring helps open and close each key over the corresponding tone hole. They test each key's seal, called the pad, for air leaks. A thin strip of plastic slides out if it's improperly sealed. The pad is made up of a plastic washer and a felt cushion surrounded by a synthetic wrapper as thin as tissue paper. A pad lasts for about five years and is very expensive to replace, about $90. It's just one of up to 100 components in a flute depending on the model. This company's flutes come in silver, gold, and platinum. They range in price from $9,000 to $48,000. Once all the keys are in place, a quick wipe to remove any pesky fingerprints. An engraver inscribes the serial number and company logo. After 120 hours of painstaking work, the flute is ready for its musical debut. <laughs>